Alright guys, let's do this. Welcome to part 7. So let's see, last part, uh, what did we do? We did Barlow, right? Yeah. Or, no, we did the first half. So, I guess I should mention, I got a new laptop. So that means that I should definitely no longer have an excuse to ever stall on these parts, should I? Oh well. So, yeah, I guess that should be good news for anyone who's following this. Um, next we're gonna go do the other path of Barlow. Oh yeah, and we got a new weapon, didn't we? This is the- oh, this is the deafening weapon. I didn't- I just turned down the volume. I can barely even hear myself talk. Yeah, this weapon is a seeker gun. You can see how it works. It just shoots out this little ball, and then the ball gains like these axe blades, and then it shoots towards enemies and blows up. Um, we also have the pulse rifle, and I don't know if I've talked about it before. It's the first sniper rifle in the series. <clears throat> and here's the way sniper rifles work in this game. Or, not this game, but in all games in the series. Basically, when you're in first-person mode, you can zoom in and out, but you do not have to be in first-person mode to use it. And if you're not in first-person mode when you use it, the weapon will shoot straight out in front of Ratchet. And the one thing that all of them have in common is that they do a ton of damage. Sniper rifles are all some of the most damaging weapons in the series. <clears throat> Oh well. So basically the main thing is that you want to get good at using them in third person because you know you're not always going to be able to use them in first person. Of course in situations like this that's great. I've got three sh two shots, two enemies, just one more. I'm not even going to risk that. And he got in the way. That's lovely. No ammo. Oh god, Ronnie's coming! Oh, I'm surprised I got that, because the camera just flipped the second before I shot. Man, imagine I had shot a second late, I would've been sad. Yeah, the other problem with the sniper rifles in the series is that they almost always have a really, really low amount of... I was about to say health. Low amount of ammo. So this level is... I actually really like this level. It's kind of... It's one of the reasons that I always go back to this game. I don't know why, but this game... Is going... This game. This level is going Commando to me, you know? When I think about going Commando, I think about this level and its atmosphere, and it's just... It doesn't feel like any other level. It's kind of like this big canyon area. The music is all, like, quiet, and it's like, even though there are a bunch of, like, indigenous tribes that are attacking you, you still feel kind of alone when you're going through this level. <clears throat> it's kind of like a bit of a departure from the big techno metropolis that some of the other levels are. Or anything else like that. But... I don't know, sometimes I just feel weird about this game, like it's just... I don't know why, but this game just doesn't always have the best atmosphere to me. This is probably the only time in the game where I do think it has good atmosphere. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love this game, but I don't think... Um... I guess I should clarify that this game did bring a lot of things into the series, as you know, I'm always talking about the changes it made from the first game. But I don't really think they got this formula really well done until Up Your Arsenal. So I'll be excited to get to that. <clears throat> Later, though, I will end up talking about it. There's just this point in the game where it's like I kind of lose interest with going Commando. I'll play through the first half and then I'll kind of be like, oh yeah, I, I know how the rest of the game goes. 
which is too bad because this game is really good, but it's just, it's not my favorite. Probably pretty low on my list of the favorites, of my favorites in the series. I'm having horrible aim with these mini turrets, wow. Ratchet keeps turning around 180 degrees whenever I need to shoot one. Throw one. Eat one. <clears throat> I don't know why, but I always have to clear my throat a lot when I do these. Maybe I'm just not cut out. I don't even know what to say for this episode. It's just Ratchet going around this level. Nothing's happening. So many bolts. Oh, coming up is actually a really cool part in the game. Oh, I didn't even talk about these stupid, um... Ugly dinosaurs. And wow, my aim is impeccable today. I'm just gonna go ahead and just burn my ammo, because I already wasted a bunch, and it's not like I'm gonna be using it for the next part. But, <clears throat> those stupid dinosaur looking things, dinosaur things, wait, I said dinosaur twice. <laughs> I guess I must have thought I said dragon or something. Yeah, the stupid dinosaurs, they're called Barlawian store beasts. And they're quite perhaps one of the most annoying enemies in the series. This game has some really annoying enemies. Oh, so I tried to throw a mini turret before the cutscene, but then the cutscene destroyed it so that you couldn't, like, kill these guys during it. So yeah, you get this big fight with a whole bunch of guys. I love this part. Regarding those stupid sword beasts, though, and I keep saying stupid, I'm getting a little tired of that word. Wow, the pulse rifle's already upgraded? This is interesting. This is too bad because I wanted to use it more, but now that it's upgraded, I don't really need to use it that much. You know, you always want to be working on weapons that need to be upgraded. Now, am I going to stop delaying that sword beast explanation? Yeah, the sword beasts, when they see you, they will start charging towards you, and I swear they are nearly impossible to dodge. They have this stupid ram attack and oh, that's it. Excuse me. I think I just blew another vacuum tube. Should I have a look? My word! You young people are so fresh these days. Oh, don't feel bad. I guess I'm just old fashioned about that sort of thing. Did you know that I've been with Gadgetron since the beginning? So you sell these gadgets? Darling, they sell themselves. Yeah, the sword beasts have this nearly unavoidable ram attack, which is really annoying. Here, though, if we've played the first game, then we get five Ratchet and Clank weapons, five Gadgetron weapons for free. The bomb glove, the beautiful Tesla claw, the Visibomb gun, the Walloper, and the most important one, the decoy glove. Here's the sad thing though, all of them suck now. They just, they're not nearly as good as any of the regular weapons in this game. And for some reason, um, they don't even start out with full ammo. I mean, at least in the first game, I think the bomb glove started out with 30 out of its 40 ammo. Oh yeah, the decoy glove, um now has Ratchet in his commando suit. I think that's a nice touch. See, <laughs> so yeah, all the weapons do work exactly like they did in the last game. Tesla Claw's a little weird, I gotta say. Visibomb does work the same. The Visibomb is probably the best weapon, just because it still does a lot of damage, but of course it's really it's, like, nerfed from how good it was back in the first game. Another problem is that none of these weapons upgrade, meaning that there's really no incentive to use them. So, yeah, it's a nice touch. If you have saved data from the first game, you might as well go ahead and get these weapons. But, uh, but besides that, they're pretty useless. 
Now, why did I say the decoy glove was the most important? Well, we'll find out about that later. Hey, who let you in here? Get lost before I flatten your robot into a hubcap. Touch him, and it's Plasma City! Oh, gosh. You didn't have to yell. <laughs> why did he have to yell? Uh, hey, man. I can't hear you. La, 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 la. Only the little guy. Sir, it is okay. We are your fellow desert riders. You're? So you understand my sensitivities? Absolutely, sir. We just came here to race. Well, you can borrow my bluebell, so long as you're gentle. She just needs a few repairs. Hang in there, my brother. Bluebell is in good hands. Alright, so time to use the electrolyzer, you know, fixes things. Basically anytime anything needs fixing, it's gonna have the electrolyzer. I do like the electrolyzer sometimes. Um, but coming up, we're about to do something awesome. Remember those hoverboard races from the first game that I kept failing at? Yeah. Say goodbye. Cause now we have hover bikes and whoa! Okay. Okay, I platinum bolt on this course. Uh, I don't believe there are any gold bolts on Hopper but No, um... Uh, on planet... What the hell's the name of the planet? Kalibo 3. I believe there was a gold bolt on that race course. And I'm doing horribly well. I should be lapping these guys by now. I mean, I haven't even finished the lap, and I should be lapping them. So yeah, the way hover bikes work is they get boosts. Up in the top left, you'll see a little boost meter, and you'll see me pick up these little triangles. I can hold three at once. The triangles are how many boosts I've picked up. Like I said, I can hold three at once. Well, four technically, if you count the one that's already active. Um, and what you can do is you tap R1 and you'll boost. But if you're already holding R1, it'll just automatically use the next boost you pick up. So my strategy is always to hold X, which is the acceleration button, and hold R1, which is the boost button, and just pick up every boost along the way. I wonder if there are people who mash the R1 button because they don't know you can hold it. Oh yeah, there are sword beasts on the field here. If you crash into one, you instantly die. I hate them always hate them. The thing about these hover bike races though is that they control way better than the hoverboard. Um, you don't crash nearly as easily and the courses are just designed way better. I just think the hover bike is really really fun. Now that I think about it I'm upset there's no like multiplayer hover bike racing. Uh, this game doesn't really have multiplayer. I mean, um, it has a multiplayer minigame. If you want to count that. I guess I should show that off at some point. And I missed that turbo. Unfortunately, there's another one here. See, I'm not doing so well in this race, but if you know what you're doing, these are not that hard to win. They're not frustrating like the hoverboard was. 29, a respectable time. Great racing, buddy. Here, take this helmet so the guys know you're one of us. Thank you, sir. Uh-oh. Incoming message from the boss. Attention all Thugs for Less employees. First of all, whatever slug brain's been eating all the choochie bars in the break room, better quit stuffing his face. Hello? Hey, turn those lights off! It's bad feng shui. Ahem. <clears throat> Next, our space rendezvous point has been moved to, and listen up, knuckleheads, the Felsen system in sector one, two, three, four, five. If you're no good with numbers, find a buddy to help you. Lastly, the company picnic is this Sunday. Don't forget to bring your own juice this time. Hey! I saw that, Cletus! You just turned yourself a writer! Don't worry. The boss only yells because he loves you. Yes. Yes, sir. I do feel his affection. Did you see that broadcast? Not really. You should scope out that rendezvous point. 
Yes, we might intercept some stray transmissions. So, before we go, I'm going to take on the other hoverbike races. There are five levels. Um, there's like beginner, intermediate, advanced, Vukovar, and then expert. So, one of the new things that you have now is weapons. The first one only had turbo. Press L1 and you shoot other racers. But because you don't want to see me do all of five of these, I'm just going to skip straight to the expert course. And these racers are really aggressive. Notice how they all just fly right in front of me. I miss the... Um... Oh, yeah, and also, after the third race, they'll start shooting at you. But the nice thing is that uh, from the third race onward, we now get shortcuts. So yeah, the race really changes from what you saw the first time. Now it's all about getting shortcuts and shooting down all the other racers. But once we started lapping people, there's really no reason to shoot anyone anymore. You can shoot the sword beasts, um, but chances are you won't kill them. It's like they take a lot of hits, so you know, kind of pointless. That lightning bolt right there is probably one of the best items. If you get it at the start of the race and you pull it off, you'll kill literally everyone in front of you. Now, and regarding the other racers attacking you, um, the other racers do not get weapons. All they have is this little thing where a target comes over you. And basically, when you see that green target about to come over you, you need to shake it off. And I didn't jump there for some reason. Yeah, there's not really any jump button, you just go off ramps. But whenever that target comes over you, you have to shake it off. You'll probably see me, like, uh, tilt to the side whenever one comes over me. I don't think any more are going to come over me, though. I'm already too far ahead. But yeah, when that happens, you just need to, like, shake it off a little. Um, it can be really annoying if they do it in a place where you're trying to line up a jump. Sometimes you can get out of their range before you even need to shake it off. But basically it's really simple to shake them off, but if the target does get on you, it will turn red, and at that point, you can't shake it off. You're already dead. They shoot a rocket at you, and then you die, and then that's it. So yeah, there's um there's a skill point for getting a certain time. I don't remember what it is, but I got it in one of the races that I cut out. So I said, you know, you don't need to see the race done five times. Hoverbikes though, and there is one more hoverbike race, just like how in the first game there was one more hoverboard. But we'll see that later. For now, we're going to Megapolis. Catch you next time.